Welcome back to the channel and today we're talking WWE 2K20 and I'm asking the question Tattoos or not? Now before we get into it I want to make sure you subscribe to the channel with the notification bell turned on so you stay up to date with all my WWE games content. So tattoos or not? Now this is a very interesting story and I'm sure you've heard some extracts from this but last year WWE 2K19 there was controversy around Randy Orton's tattoos and whether or not they should be featured in a WWE game and this was because a lawsuit was taken out by the tattoo artist that gave Orton those tattoos and her name was Catherine Alexander. Now I have been looking at an article which has given us all the details up to date and where we are at with this story and where the lawsuit has got to. And I'm going to read you a couple of extracts just to remind you and then we're going to talk about this in today's video because the big question is, will we get Orton's tattoos or not in WWE 2K20? Because if we don't, that could have a major impact on his likeness in the next instalment of the WWE games franchise. Now I'm going to read you some notes from an article which I found online that has kept up to date with this lawsuit between Catherine Alexander and Visual Concepts. And we're going to see where we are at present time when it comes to WWE 2K20 because this lawsuit continues to rattle on. And does it have a major impact on the likeness for Randy Orton in the next instalment of the WWE Games franchise? Well, let's find out. Okay, so the initial controversy was that 2K and Visual Concepts were accused of using tattoo designs for Randy Orton's character model when they weren't allowed to do so. Catherine Alexander, who did the tattoos for Orton, has filed a lawsuit against WWE, Take-Two Interactive and 2K Games claiming that they do not have her permission to use the art in the game. So that was the initial story and that was the initial controversy which cropped up after the launch of WWE 2K19. Now WWE did attempt to settle the matter and they offered to pay $450 for the designs of the tattoos so they could be featured. But Alexander declined this because she says that she did not give permission. And then PW Insider reported a trial date has been set for the Randy Orton tattoo lawsuit and that date was the 27th of April 2020. So. That is one year away. That's quite a long time away. And by that time, WWE 2K20 will be out there. It will be released. Now, I just want to read this final extract from this article. Again, it's linked in the description box below. If you want to read the full rundown of how this controversy and lawsuit has played out thus far. But the article says this. Unfortunately... For the WWE Universe, there's not really much left to say on this. The court date won't take place for about another calendar year and by then, WWE 2K20 will already be in the hands of diehard WWE fans. What will be interesting to see, however, is if Orton's tattoo designs will once again be included in the newest edition of the WWE game. As for Orton, he is not named as a defendant in Alexander's lawsuit, which means he will likely not be involved in the court proceedings or the result of such. So, where does this leave Randy Orton and his iconic tattoos for WWE 2K20? Now, I find it a little bit odd that WWE 2K Take 2 Interactive Visual Concepts decided to try and settle this by paying off Catherine Alexander $450. Because if they are willing to do that, to buy the likeness, to buy those designs, then surely they're admitting that in the first place, they didn't own the right to use them. 
Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of law, but that's just my thought process. And if 2K then decided this year to remove those tattoos or, you know, simply adjust them so they're not identical to the tattoos that Randy Orton has, maybe they do something slightly with the skulls. I don't know. But if they were to adjust them or remove them, aren't they once again admitting liability that they have indeed used the designs without permission, thus why they're making those adjustments. So I don't think either of those two decisions would really work in the favor of 2K, Visual Concepts, WWE, if they were going to go forward and have this lawsuit in 2020 because adjusting or removing simply backs up what Catherine Alexander is saying. So I think for 2K20, Take 2, 2K, Visual Concepts, WWE will push forward and continue to use the tattoo designs which they've used in previous WWE games. They will use Orton's tattoo designs, the ones that are in dispute at the moment. I don't believe they will make any adjustments and I don't think they will remove the tattoos because I think it would add complications to the lawsuit in 2020 and thus it might fall in favour of Catherine Alexander. So until that court case, until that lawsuit comes up, 2K will stick by their guns and continue to push forward. That's what I think and that means that we will get no adjustment to Randy Orton and we will get him with his identical and current likeness which we've seen in WWE games in the past. However, after 2020 and that lawsuit, things could all change. Because if Alexander was to win her lawsuit, it could have major implications to future WWE games and not just WWE games. It could impact the gaming industry overall because it then drags into question what companies have the rights to keep in their games and what they don't. Would they need to contact freelancers for tattoos, piercings, all sorts of aspects come into play. And it would even make me question if I could use Randy Orton from a WWE game in my YouTube video because of course I haven't asked permission from Catherine Alexander to use that likeness of Randy Orton, would that be pulled into doubt? So it really does open up a huge minefield uh, for copyright issues. And with the state of YouTube and what we've got at the moment, wow, I mean, there's enough of that already. So I wanna get your views and opinions on all of this because I understand from Catherine Alexander's point of view. She is a freelancer and she doesn't want a major company exploiting her work because of course she either could earn some royalties from that work or get more exposure. And in the instance that WWE didn't ask for any permission, they haven't really given her any of that. So I understand where she's coming from, but I also understand where WWE visual concepts 2K and Take Two are coming from because of course Randy Orton is a key superstar, his tattoos are iconic and associated with him and they want to get the best likeness possible. So it really is a difficult and a grey area which is being explored right now and I think many people think that this lawsuit was brushed under the carpet. Well no, that's not the case, it's still ongoing and an outcome isn't going to be reached until 2020. So I want to get your views and opinions on this. Who do you think's right? Who do you think's wrong? And what do you think we're going to get in WWE 2K20? Are we gonna get Randy Orton with his current tattoos? Or are we gonna get a slight adjustment? Or do you think it's gonna get very drastic and you'll see them removed? And after 2K20, where do we go? Let's just say Catherine Alexander wins the lawsuit. 
What is going to happen? How will that impact a WWE game? How will it impact the gaming industry? It's a big topic. So make sure you get involved in this. Like I said, I think many people thought this was done and dusted, but this article was released on April 19th. I've linked it again in the description box below. So it's clearly not over and we could have implications for future WWE games. My feeling towards this in its entirety is that I reckon before 2020 and that lawsuit date, this will get settled somehow. I just have that feeling. But if it doesn't, we need to watch this space because if Catherine Alexander wins, I'm sure there'll be plenty of other freelance independent artists that will be saying, look, you featured this, I deserve something, and it's going to open up a massive can of worms. So have your say, let me know. I think for 2K20, Orton will have his trademark tattoos. I think they will be there, but... Oh, it's getting squeaky bum time. Well, not for a year anyway. But all that's left to be said is get involved in the conversation and please rate, comment and subscribe. And one very other important thing to note is if worse came to worst and we were to get the tattoos removed and we couldn't have them because of the lawsuit, then I'm sure somehow some clever clogs on community creations would get those tattoos in and apply them to Randy Orton and save the day. And if we got some of the options that I've said in my previous videos, they are also linked in the description box below when it comes to adjusting the likeness of a superstar, whether it be facial hair, tattoos, um, you know, all sorts of things like that. If we had that opportunity to do those things, that could really help out when these problems occur. But then I still don't know where we would stand if, let's say, for example, a community creation person applied those tattoos and then Catherine Alexander saw that. Oh, my God. It swings and roundabouts. It really, really is. But it is a great topic to talk about. And that's why I wanted to bring it to the channel. So all that's left to be said is please rate, comment and subscribe. Tattoos or not. This is Delzinski signing out.